Hey, it's Vanessa Joy with Adorama TV, and I'm talking to you today about how to edit light and airy photos in Lightroom. <laughs> First of all, we're setting the record straight. Photos do not happen in post-production. Photos happen in your camera. First of all, I use an import that's just something that I made based on the things that I typically do. Presets are great guys, but they're not gonna apply to every single photo because every single photo is taken differently. So you can go to breatheyourpassion.com and grab my preset, but depending on how you take photos, it's not gonna necessarily work the way it works on mine. Getting bright and airy photos starts with how you're taking it. So if you want a bright and airy photo, make sure that you are taking it in a lightly colored background. So I don't go looking for evergreen trees to put my couples in front of. I'm looking for backgrounds that have the sun coming through it that's a nice light green or any other color on the lighter end of the spectrum. I mess around a bit with the curves just a little bit, really reinforcing the things I'm already doing. And then this is really my secret sauce, all right? So I mess with the saturation. I lower the skin tone saturations and then raise the green, aqua, blue, purple, magenta, really everything else. And this helps the vibrancy of the photo. But in addition, I'm raising the luminosity of the skin tones as well. So, you know, it just helps make the photos nice and bright, vibrant, the skin tones uh, look good, not overly oompa loompa. And that's definitely a goal of mine. I am doing some sharpening, I'm making sure that my masking is up to about 89 so I'm not sharpening you know like her crow's feet I'm just sharpening the edges here I do have noise reduction on not that I need it here at 100 but it's just there by default and then of course removing chromatic aberration and enabling the profile lens corrections and this was shot with 85 millimeter 1.4 it does make a difference you know if I take this off all right see the difference little bit of distortion and a little bit of vignetting and I just completely removed that. I'm just gonna go ahead and sync all of that. And then I just go through and adjust manually. And then if there's any little adjustments that I need to make to the exposure, I do that also. I'm really careful about not blowing out my whites. I know that's a little bit trendy, but I do not like blowing out the detail of my white wedding dresses. The details what my clients paid for and the last thing they want is their beautiful $20,000 dress to look like it came off the David's Bridal Sale Rack. So sometimes my exposures are a little bit off and I do like things a little bit bright, so that looks good. And ultimately I'm looking at the histogram here too, guys. So looking at this histogram, I've got no shadows. So I'm gonna come down here, take the blacks and bring them down. It just adds a little bit of contrast, really just, making sure that her hair here and uh, eyelashes, they really pop. And sometimes I just go to the next one if it's in the same scenario and hit previous. See what happens. A little bit overexposed. I'm just gonna bring it down. There we go. So this I wanted to focus on a little bit. I'm not one to do a lot of retouching. I don't like it. My clients actually don't ask for it. Because of the way I shoot and the way that the light is controlled, you really shouldn't have to do a lot of skin retouching if you're using light correctly. But I am gonna help them out just a little bit. So coming in here to my brushes, I do have a brush that helps remove bags. And these are the settings for it. So it's just lowering the clarity a bit, bringing up the shadows, actually lowering clarity way too much. I'm gonna bring that up. Um, and just doing some other things that's just gonna soften right underneath the eyes so that she doesn't feel like she has bags under the eyes. You know, as much as you can control this, that was a little too much, let's bring that down. There we go. As much as you can control this with light, you know, sometimes with weddings, you cannot control it. So it's nice to have these solutions. And then another thing you can do if you want to, I have a little setting here for blue eyes, which she does have. That's a fairly warm picture, so it's making them more green. So I can come in here and just cool down the color tone of just her eyes, add a little bit of saturation, uh, and even bring down the whites and highlights so that the color pops a little bit more. It's very slight. I don't like doing a ton of it. Let me show you before and after. 
This photo is actually an outtake from how to make it look like a sunny day when it's not. It's one of the photos that I took before I added the sun with my off camera flash, but it's still a pretty photo. I can take this and using my gradient tool, take away some of the contrast and add warmth in the gradient tool so it kind of looks like sun flare. It's a little neat trick. Again, not a huge fan of editing things in post and faking it later, but if I have a photo like this that was a test shot and it looks great, that's a way to make it look greater. This particular photo, I'm working on the skin tones. Because I didn't have them in exactly the right light that was flattering for skin tones and they were standing on more of like a red brick sort of ground that was coming up and hitting their skin tones, I really needed to work on those here. So I'm just messing around with the white balance and the tint to get a skin tone that looks accurate. I could also go into the hue, saturation, and luminosity and mess around with it there, but I think I got what I'm looking for. Ultimately, the skin tones are what matters to me. The background and everything else is secondary. I want their skin to look natural. Oh my gosh, does anybody see the bad thing I did here? It is horrible, this photo. Look at that horizon line going right through the groom's head. No, 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 no. That's not a good thing to do. Don't do that. This is an interesting photo, guys. This was meant to be a silhouette, but as I was messing around with this photo, I noticed, hey, I could bring it up three stops, it is a raw photo, and get a completely different look. Now, I don't recommend this. I don't recommend it at all, actually, because the noise and the grain that you're gonna get in this image by bumping it up three stops from a silhouette to a properly exposed photograph isn't gonna look good. It'll probably look good on this screen. It might even look good on Instagram, but the second I print it out, you're gonna notice the noise. You're gonna notice the muddiness in the image, and it's just not gonna look like it would've if you had exposed for it correctly. So that's how I edit my light and airy photos, my whimsical, dreamy, romantic photos. It shouldn't be that much in post. Get a rant camera. Looking for more inspiration? Click the link in the description below to download my free posing guide. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to make sure you're notified when new videos pop up here on Adorama TV. Leave some comments, ask your questions. There are no dumb questions and there's no such thing as mean comments. There is such thing as mean comments. I collect the mean comments so I have an excuse to eat ice cream. But seriously, don't be a